The Lions are back in the win column after a Monday night showdown inside Ford Field. Now Detroit will head into the bye week before a matchup on the West Coast sends this team to the City of Angels. We're talking all about these 6-2 and two Lions right here on Inside the Pride. Let's go. Going down. Sack back at the 30-yard line. Aiden Hutchinson got him again. Goes deep downfield. Got a man wide open. Inside the five. Caught. End zone. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. How about that? And by the way, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Yeah. All roads go through Detroit. This is season two of Inside the Pride on the Lions TV network. I'm Danny Rogers. On the eve of Halloween, Lions fans ascended upon Ford Field to get the first look at the 90th season alternate helmets, watch legend Lomas Brown be inducted into the Pride of the Lions, and see the Raiders in town with the bye week for Detroit looming in the distance. Let's relive the Monday night showdown with sights and sounds from the game. Here we go, getting set for the Lions and Raiders. They get an opportunity in front of a national crowd to come out here and really show the people what type of team we have, what type of attitude we have in Detroit, and what we're building toward. And it is a big crowd. It is an electric atmosphere. Waiting all day for it, but guess what? It's here. Kickoff is on the way. Let's do this. This drive looks very good right now. Goff's going to work out of the gun. Gibbs to his left. They're on 36. Quick throw right side. Got it to Gibbs. Picks up a block. Gets across the 40-yard line. Fights for the first down and gets it. Out across the 42 to the 43-yard line. Riley Patterson. This will be a 44-yard field goal attempt. There's the snap. Spot. Kick away. It is up and it is good. Good job, Riley. So the Lions take the opening possession to put three on the board. So here comes Las Vegas. Out of the huddle and to the line. Garoppolo out of the gun. Jacobs to his left. Garoppolo takes the snap back and looking, looking, pumping, throwing downfield. Picked off by the Lions. That is intercepted in the end zone. Coming back up the left sideline is Kirby Joseph. Joseph back to the 11-yard line where he is taken down by Hunter Renfro. Kirby's talked about it. He's been looking for that football. Well, Jimmy G just gave him one right there. Kirby taking advantage of that, and that's what you have to do. Nice job, defense. Hey, boy! Let's see what Ben Johnson can dial up here before halftime. Raiders will get the ball to start the second half. Goff takes the snap back and looking, wants to throw, does. Deep middle, caught, Laporta, inside the five, to the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. Oh, baby, Goff with a laser, 87 hauled it in, and the Lions find the house for the first time tonight. 30 minutes of football left here, so. Here we go. Chance to get off the field here early third quarter. Raiders with a third and nine from their own 37. Amir Abdullah in the game at running back. Garoppolo takes the shotgun snap back. Looking, gonna get hit, gonna go down. Sack back at the 30 yard line. That defense got him. Julian O'Quara with a sack. Here come the Lions back on offense. First down from the 27 yard line of the Raiders. Goff takes the snap, gives to Gibbs, Gibbs bounces through a hole. There it goes outside 20. Go. Gibbs 15, Gibbs 10, angling to the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. Oh, baby, what a run. What a run. 27 yards. Got skinny, went through the line, and made it to the house. Damn, I think he might have did it for number 20. That looked a little that bit. Looked that a little bit big like him. That's a big touchdown for the Detroit Lions. And this defense just got to find a way to step up and, and keep that pass rush going. Garoppolo out of the gun. There's the snap. Garoppolo back. Garoppolo going to get hit. Yes, sir. Sacked again. Alex Anzalone got him. 34 with a big play and the Lions take over on down. And I'm telling you, Dan, that's how you show off. That's how you come in front of the nation, and that's how you put your talents on display. And this one is over. Lions will take a knee, go into victory formation, and that's gonna do it. That's the way to bounce back. That's the way to bounce back. That's what I expected, that's what we all expected. All right, you guys came to work, and, and we got six. Dude, we got six at the bye, gentlemen. Mm -hmm. We got six at the bye. We're sitting right at the top, right where we need to be. And now we get a little time to heal up, rest. Now, I do have one game ball. Defense, 157 total yards. <laughs> six sacks, nine quarterback hits, seven TFLs, and one interception. Oh, yeah! That game ball. 
this game ball down to Aaron Glenn. That's the way to step back up, go to work, and man, the sky's the f***ing limit, all right? We will see you tomorrow. We'll clean this tape up. Life's good, brother. It's crazy to think we are almost halfway through the regular season. That means it's time to look back at my favorite moments. Which plays and milestones do you think made the cut? Find out next on Inside the Pride. Inside the Pride is sponsored by Kroger, Henry Ford Health, and by the Ford Motor Company. Welcome back to Inside the Pride. While the Detroit Lions may have a bye week, we take no days off here on Inside the Pride. Don't you worry. Through the first eight weeks, Detroit has had some memorable moments. I've got my top five, so let's go through it. We're going back to week one at Kansas City because of Branch the Bandit. If you know, you know. It was the most beautiful night to kick off the entire NFL season in Arrowhead against the defending Super Bowl champs. And it was the rookie defensive back, Brian Branch, making his NFL debut, picking off Patrick Mahomes to start the third quarter. Mahomes back, throws, it is incomplete, picked off, picked off by the Lions. Brian Branch with it left side. He's going, baby, he's going to the house. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. Deflected in the air, Branch ran under it, and he took it all the way back. The Lions are an extra point away from tying this game. All that young man has done since he arrived in Detroit is make plays. Welcome to the NFL rookie, an instinctive player from day one, and he showed it in week one. All right, we're going back home for this next memorable moment. Detroit Lions fans have been very lucky to have offensive tackle Taylor Decker for a century. Decker started his 100th career game. Decker helped Detroit to a win over the Panthers in week five that consisted of three rushing touchdowns and three passing TDs from quarterback Jared Goff. But this guy, not hungry to start, man. He's been here for years. a lot to me. Um, this organization, when they brought me in, like, it was to be a winner, man. And now we're doing that, and it feels so good. Like, I, I feel the best I've ever felt in my career, regardless of all the ball I played, because, man, it just feels so good to be a part of something special. So I appreciate all you guys. If you're wondering who these Detroit Lions are playing for this season, it's probably the big guy, Taylor Decker, who deserves all of it. All right, we are going to Green Bay, primetime at Lambeau. We were seeing double because defensive back Jerry Jacobs picks off quarterback Jordan Love in the second quarter to give those Lions a 24-3 lead. And then he does it again in the fourth quarter for his first ever multi-pick game in his NFL career. Here come the Packers from the Lion 14. Love back, sets, looks, looks, throws, intercepted. Picked up by the Lions, Jerry Jacobs, second of the night. Jacobs to the left sideline, and he'll just run out of bounds at the 18-yard line. That should ice this ball game. From being an undrafted free agent to starting in this Detroit secondary and making some pretty big plays. Congrats to Jerry on the season so far. For my next memorable moment, a lot of fans did not see this play out on the TV screens. You had to watch the sights and sounds from the game. There was no way I was going to leave out Taylor Decker calling his offensive coordinator, Ben Johnson, a sicko. Lions turn the ball over, Jerry Jacobs interception, who else? And then Ben Johnson has the audacity to call a reverse flea flicker, which ends in a 31-yard touchdown score from Sam Laporta. Check it out. Off the takeaway, gadget play. They're gonna go with a flea flicker. Goff throws, man, wide open. Touchdown, Detroit Lions, Sam Laporta. Yeah! Yeah! Bro, let's go! You're a sicko, I love it. I love it too. You know how everyone calls Ben Johnson a genius play caller? Maybe we should call him a sicko play caller from now on. All right, this is my top favorite moment from this season so far. It's right up there with watching all the Lions games with my dad growing up, and he would always tell me about the greatest of all time, Barry Sanders. He had his very own statue unveiled just outside of Ford Field. An iconic day for an iconic Lion. Barry off the right. Barry to the 45. 
And bumps to the 40, breaks it, 35, 30, he's gone! Unbelievable! Touchdown, Lions, Barry Sanders! Oh my gosh, what a run! Today we come together to honor one of the most transcendent players in NFL history. Very simply put, today is your day, my friend. Barry Sanders is beloved by this community for the memories that he gave us, the amazing runs on the field, but the class that he always showed off the field and every Sunday. I don't think anything could be more appropriate than recognizing you as the greatest Lion of all time. Congratulations, Barry. I'm so blessed and fortunate to be in this position to have this kind of a tribute to so many that are connected to me. If I could, I would go out to each and every Lions fan and give you a hug, tell you how much I appreciate you. You've heard the saying that uh, you give a person their flowers while they're around. I don't plan on going anywhere anytime soon. I'm just saying this is one heck of a bouquet uh, for me. So thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Love you all. The only thing better than the real statue is a one-of-one one mini replica. The Detroit Lions Foundation is allowing one Detroit Lions fan to take this guy home. It's over 20 pounds. You have to go bid on DetroitLions.com. The auction is open until December 18th at 1159 p.m. Only one ever made, and one Detroit Lion fan gets to take it home. Happy bidding. Inside the Pride, we'll be right back. Lomas Brown's infectious laugh, willingness to always help someone in need, and his warm, thunderous voice are never mistaken. Neither are the offensive tackles 11 seasons with the Detroit Lions. While blocking for one of the greatest running backs of all time, Barry Sanders, Lomas started all but one of the 164 games he played in for Detroit. Now, Lomas is forever etched into Lions history after being inducted into the Pride of the Lions Monday night. Detroit's first round. The Lions select Lomas Brown, offensive tackle, Florida. First and 10 for the Detroit Lions. Here's Lomas Brown, the rookie. Misdirection, Jones, he breaks through a big hole. Inside the 10, five, touchdown by James Jones. Boom, kicks out on Harris. There's a nice hole, pull around by 75, Lomas Brown. He's the, the perfect example of being one of the nicest human beings that I've ever been around in my whole life. But on the field, he was a fierce, fierce competitor. He's a, a pro, he's a great teammate, and selfless. He was good right from the beginning. What allowed Lomas to excel was that he could overcome any, any situation. He could get off balance and get a quick stab with his right hand and, and, and regain his position. He made seven Pro Bowls, all pro once. And he was durable. He was absolutely durable. And he played on winners. I'll tell you, number 75 there, Lomas Brown, I've always said, is one of the best tackles in the league. <laughs> Willie Green. They have been going at this defensive line all day and winning the battle. I think he's the standard. So if I'm Taylor Decker, you know, if I'm Panay Sewell, you know, I want to live to the standard that Lomas Brown did. I think for the organization, he set the standard at left tackle. And each one of you contestants are going to get a thousand dollars towards your college, okay? It's a big part of of professional sports is that transition to the next phase of life. I'm glad he's uh, grounded himself in the community, doing things that he in, he's enjoying right now. As I bring in my friend Lomas Brown, big low. Man, damn, what a block! I joke that Lomas is the mayor. Mike Duggan thinks he's the mayor, but it's Lomas Brown because Lomas knows everybody. Everybody knows Lomas. He shakes hands, he hugs. Everybody wants to be around Lomas uh, because he's that type of guy. Welcome to the fight of life. Lomas, my man, you absolutely deserve this. This is an amazing thing, but it goes to the way that you've lived your life. As a football player, you were excellent. After your career, you exemplified excellence in the community where you just served others. And you have done nothing but embrace this community. And now it is rightful that this community embraces you back. And it is just amazing to know that every time anybody walks into this beautiful building, they will look up and see your name on the wall 
and the memories of you as a player and as a man will always be fresh. One pride. I'm honored to be here tonight to celebrate Lomas Brown and help induct him into the pride of the Lions. Lomas was drafted by the Lions in the first round of the 1985 NFL Draft. As the sixth overall pick, he played in 18 seasons of the NFL, 11 of them as a Detroit Lion. It's no coincidence that some of the Lions' most successful modern seasons came with Lomas manning the offensive line every time. You see Barry changing directions in the backfield. The big fella, he, and he is big, was up front blocking some of the fiercest rushers in the NFL history. Lomas was named Pro Bowler seven consecutive years from 1990 to 1996. Needless to say, Lomas dominated the offensive front in the 90s, including 1995, when he was recognized as first team All-Pro. Since retiring, Lomas has made Detroit his home and continues to lead through his impact to youth in the greater Detroit area and is a Lions legend who gives countless hours in our community. On behalf of the Lions organization, Lomas, myself, the Hamps, the Ford family, and all other members, it's a privilege to welcome you into the pride of the Lions. First of all, I, I'd like to thank you all. Uh, I'm very, very humble, very humble. <laughs> very humble by being put up in the pride of the Lions. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my beautiful wife, Wendy Brown, my kids, my sister, all my family, they're here. I'd like to thank the Fords. Thank you all. I really appreciate it. You brought me here in 1985, a young kid out of Miami, and I appreciate all the love that you've shown me and my family throughout the years. Uh, I also want to thank all these guys behind me. Some guys I played with, some guys I didn't play with, but these are guys that set the path for a lot of the guys that you see on this field today. I'm honored to say these are my alumni, these are my friends. Thank you all for welcoming me into the hall. I appreciate it, thank you. Wishing for something special? Maybe it's VIP seats, the meal of a lifetime, or an unforgettable journey. Whatever it is, Community Financial Credit Union can make it a reality. Share your impossible dream at impossibledreams.org by scanning the QR code at the bottom of the screen. It's spooky season here on Rogers Retweets, and I took to Twitter to ask Detroit Lions fans for their best Detroit Lions inspired costumes, and you guys delivered. First up, lots of babies, of course, dress as lions. I love this one from Spartan Dog 2. Real simple, hashtag one pride. This guy's cute. Next up, okay, I love Little Miss's costume. She's got icebox taped to her little jersey, so we know that it's inspired by Little Giants and Detroit Lions. How about icebox? I love it, 10 out of 10. This costume might be the front runner for the last few seasons. When head coach Dan Campbell said that he drank venti Starbucks coffees in the morning, like multiple of them, people kind of, you know, did their own take on that. So here it is from Brad Swiftney. Thank you so much. I love the mini clipboard. Great touch, the little headphone. You're crushing it, man. That's a wrap on this edition of Rogers Retweets and this episode of Inside the Pride. Detroit Lions are on a bye week, so no Lions football this upcoming Sunday. So go out, have some fun, enjoy some cider mills, and we'll see you right back here on Inside the Pride next week. <laughs>